Capitalism as it currently is is not reformable. We can't make it more democratic. Capitalism will always lead to the dictatorship of a few amount of powerful and rich people. Did you always know you wanted to pursue a career in politics? You know, I don't really, I don't really like to characterize uh, as me pursuing a career mm -hmm. more so. I think uh, serving um, as a city council member or really any political position is more about serving the community. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really think about it in terms of a career and, and more of kind of a service to, to the people that I live with, my neighbors, and, and my overall community. So you ended up going to the military. I did. How old were you when you went into the military? Oh, I was a baby. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, 19 years old. Oh, okay, so you and, went really young. Yeah, so it was, a, you know, it was an experience well. I mean, I, I, I w actually went to San Diego State. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I was originally going. And, you know, like many people, I wasn't able to afford living on the dorms. And, uh, you know, I couldn't afford food. I couldn't afford to wash my clothes. Uh, just another experience, I think, of, of the system that we have. And um, I, I was packing up my stuff. I walked out the door and, you know, the army recruiter was right outside waiting for me. They had a table set up. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know, at that time, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, it was like that. It was I, I wasn't sure where I was going. And so um, the army offered me a career, offered me, an, a, you know, new experiences. And I signed up. So how long after you didn't renew your contract, mm -hmm. how, what's the time span in between where you decided, okay, I'm done with the military and now it's really time to really think about how I can impact community mm -hmm. and if that impact needs to be me running for office? Ooh, uh, that's a good question. I think, you know, a lot of it was me just trying to find a, a living, you know, me going and making sure that I had an education, that I had a good job to fall back and support my family with. And then just in the process of, of doing that, I kind of learned, you know, what the obstacles were in, in our communities. Um, the fact that we have to pay so much for rent, the fact that I see, you know, people out on the streets and, and you know, what we can be subject to if we're not successful in those mm -hmm. things. And, you know, I, one of my first political experiences was, you know, doing something as simple as making food for the homeless in the community. That was how I started engaging in the political process is realizing that there is an issue and that we as regular citizens can contribute to changing. And that's this is really what that run is all about. You're running on as a communist. I am. The word communist and military do not go <laughs> hand in hand yeah. at all. Yeah. So how did you decide that was the ticket that you wanted to run on? Well, I think uh, I, I would you know, as I stated earlier, my experience with war and with deployment was, was really one of my, uh, you know, milestones in terms of my political development, because I understood uh, as I was trying to learn about what I was doing out there that, hey, you know what, why, are, you know, what is our purpose? And it was what I came to the conclusion was, is that ultimately we're only serving the interests of, of the rich and the wealthy on a global scale. And that, that same process takes place here locally in Long Beach. And so, you know, running and learning about imperialism, learning about the plunder of third world countries, both in Latin America and Africa and Asia, I learned that these systems of racism that impact us here locally are also operating at in the world, mm -hmm. in every every corner of the world. And communism, uh, the history of socialism, has always been shown to be a very progressive force in terms of battling racism, in terms of battling the exploitation of working people. And so, just learning that history and learning that a lot of the history that they teach us in, in schools is, is wrong in propaganda. Um, political and economic doctrine that aims to replace private property and a profit-based economy with public ownership and a communal control of at least the major means of production and the natural resources of a society. Is, is that what you believe? Yeah, I think uh, an easy way to kind of digest that and process it is it's reorganizing the economy to serve the greater good of society. And, you know, we see that here, bring it back to Long Beach, right? The way that our city government works is that if the Long Beach real estate developers don't get profit from it, it's not going to happen. If, the, you know, if they're not backing a candidate, those candidates are not going to win. That's the process that we have here. Now, the only way to combat that is to advocate for a mass program that serves the interests of the greater amount of people which are working class, which have needs here in Long Beach that are not being met. So socialism for Long Beach is what will get us out of the current predicaments that we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders is a socialist. People love Bernie Sanders. Why not just say, I'm going to run as a socialist? 
Well, I think his most uh, recent run kind of shows the limits of of that kind of identification. I think Bernie is great. I think he he advocates for a lot of the same things, and I, and I feel feel like there'd be very little that we'd actually disagree with in terms of material programs and material material policy solutions. But I think it's important to understand what our final goal is on, by saying that we're communists is that we want the eradication of capitalism as it currently is. Communism has this bad rap of not being democratic, but dem communism is really the only true form of democracy because right now we're not living in a democracy. So is that democracy where you're not having your, your, your needs met, where you're not able to be heard by your representatives, um, and that city council elections and policies are won by who has the most money? That, that's not democracy. You you retweeted something that said, yes, you should read Mao, um, Lenin, Stalin, Marx, and Engels. Stalin, Lenin, Mao, horrible people. Mm -hmm. So when you retweet that, what are you saying? Um, you know, Mao and Stalin, uh, these are figures that we look to in terms of their con contributions to the, um, the building of socialism across the world. Um, they're not particularly relevant for this current state and i think that's what that retweet is about this right now in america it's much more um it's much more important to focus on the actual figures in america that have advocated for socialism and if you look at the history of socialism here in america uh, whether it be mlk whether it be uh, claudia jones whether it be you know, gus hall angela mm -hmm. davis those people have all looked towards the contributions of socialist countries that were led by the ussr and or stalin or um you know uh, mao um, those are all figures that they admired. Uh, Fred Hampton, who recently had a biopic right about him, he was a huge fan of Mao. He right? was. And so those are, I think we have to critically think about what we're being told in our schools about these figures and and, and take it and, and be honest about where we are as a country. The, the U.S. and its leaders have had a horrible, horrible people as well. Mm -hmm. And it's about understanding, you know, the history and the context in which those, those situations occurred. Mm -hmm.